cycling and its future. New plans out today. Hello again, and the government has called today for new ideas to encourage cycling. It's issued what it calls a consultative paper, which suggests ways of providing more cycling facilities and making it safer. It means the government wants people and organisations interested in cycling to let it know their views. Mr Norman Fowler, the government minister responsible for transport, says he's launched the discussion because he's very concerned about the number of accidents on the roads, particularly those involving young cyclists. In 1979, 320 cyclists were killed and more than 23,000 were injured. It's reckoned 1980s figures are just as bad. 300 were killed last year and more than 24,000 cyclists were injured, a jump of 1,000 over the previous year. Mary Downing reports. Cycling is now more popular than ever. One in three households have a bike, and in the last 10 years, the number of cyclists on the road has more than doubled. The government thinks that cycling schemes like this one in Peterborough, with a system of cycle lanes, could be the best way to make cycling safer. But there are very few places like this. Most cyclists still have to weave their way through busy roads like this. So the government is studying the possibility of using old disused railway tracks to make up a whole network of cycle routes. They also want bikes themselves to be more safely designed and built. At the moment, the law sets standards just for brakes and lights. The government wants to improve these and other parts of the machines. Half the cycling injuries involve children. So there's a call, too, for better road safety training for young people. In the Mays prison near Belfast, another IRA hunger striker has died. He's the third person on hunger strike to die within a fortnight. Raymond McCreesh, who was sentenced to prison for attempting to murder soldiers, started his fast to death 61 days ago. An inquiry opens next week into what's been called the most controversial issue facing Scottish winter sports for 25 years. At stake is a £1 million plan to boost ski facilities in the Cairngorm Mountains, the big winter sports centre, and the future of Britain's only reindeer herd. Michael Cole reports. In the wilderness of the Cairngorms, nowhere is more remote than Lurcher's Gully. Its only permanent residents are 80 reindeer who roam across 5,000 acres grazing on lichen. May is the calving season. 600 calves have been born since Britain's only reindeer herd was established 30 years ago. At this time of the year, the herdsman's worry is usually the weather, but this year there's more on his mind. The herd's nearest neighbour, the Cairngorm Chairlift Company, wants to move into Lurcher's Gully, constructing ski lifts and building a road to reach them. When reindeer are calving, they come out onto the pasture away from the main herd to give birth. If this new development plan goes ahead, the road to the ski lift would come right across this pasture, and the ski lift itself would go right down the gully. The men who've created the Cairngorm tourist industry say the £1 million development is essential. Well, for the simple reason that skiing has become so popular over the past eight or ten years that uh, there isn't room enough for all the ones that actually want to ski. Construction inevitably means disruption. The soil is literally being worn away, and with it the lichen on which the reindeer feed. The herdsman is convinced that the proposed development would destroy the pasture. It would dig up quite a bit, and uh, it's not just a road, there's a ski fences which uh, guide the reindeer away from there. Uh, they can't jump over the top of them to go round about with them. The public inquiry will decide whether the new ski lift can be built. The reindeer company, which owns the herd, has a lease on the land, but this may not be enough to stop the development. Ipswich Town are celebrating today after they won the UEFA Cup. It's one of Europe's top football prizes. They actually lost last night's second leg against AZ Alkmaar, but scored more goals than the Dutch team over the two-match final. But right up until the last minute, it was a dramatic match. John Motson, the commentator. Mariners putting it on. Johnny walks in there. Johnny walks. Five minutes left in the first half. Petters for AZ. Away by Mills. This is Arns. 
forward for Johnny Metcock again. Yonker is in there. Foul! Here's Foul for AZ. 3-2 on the night. That's Yonker with the shot. Cooper's made two splendid saves. The flag is up for offside against Brazil, and it's which win the UEFA Cup. And finally, Britain's vets appeal to bosses today to improve conditions for a hard-done-by group of workers, factory cats. The vets say the cats aren't getting enough food, medical attention, or even sufficiently warm places for cat naps. Well, let's hope they don't go on a wildcat strike. We'll be back around the same time tomorrow with News Round Extra. Until then, bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.